Machiavelli is a weird album, man. It's uh, I was telling y'all niggas that I watched a documentary the last night on YouTube about how this nigga Pop faked his death, and you know it's the the regular run of the, you know it's not one of those regular a Pop faked his death because this and this nigga he had evidence. Okay, this nigga this nigga had a lot of shit that was like right in our faces. It was credible? Credible information? Credible information, not no made up shit. He did real songs of big. No made up shit. Okay, okay. Okay, this was all facts. Um shout out to Cole Anthony. Facts. The nigga pot. I I I'm I'm he's alive. I believe it. It took a while for me. I'm sitting here thinking like this nigga really You really believe that? Like after that documentary, bro, I have no choice but to believe that shit. Because, first off, the album is called Machiavelli, The Seven Day Theory. Right? He was in the hospital for seven days. Apparently, the nigga had a surveillance on the whole or Suge and his attorney and a, a lot of other niggas. The security guards, where they would switch, the two security guards, where they would switch shifts what security guards told him yo listen look you gotta watch what you say because there's somebody's listening to us there's somebody watching us mm. right it was Pac Pac knew apparently the fight that happened with Orlando Brown he, he had knew about it he was thinking it was gonna happen at the Tyson fight in March but it happened in the Tyson fight in July so you're saying he the fight that which uh because and actually in Dear Mama episode five the finale I know y'all ain't see it but it's not a spoiler obviously but they they talk about how that situation the fight you know what I mean uh I forget who was telling the story it might have been Snoop or Idi I mean one of them uh basically saying like how at that moment Pac was at the height of his fame and. You know what I mean? Situations like that, you usually send your security or somebody to go beat a nigga up, jump a nigga, whatever, when it's beef. Niggas was talking about how <laughs> Pac was the one that was involved in the shit. Did that, he did that on purpose. And is it, yeah, so this is, the, this is the fight we talking about. How did you get here? What was you trying to prove to who? Got caught up. He did it on purpose because of the fact that they was gonna use. He knew they was gonna use the fight to have him violate probation. He wanted to get out of death row. And, and exactly, this is around the time where his the the the, the, lawyer, the lawyer was fired. The, his publisher was fired. Everybody was fired. The only thing he had to do was leave death row. And to add, just add a little bit more context, Snoop talked about that on that episode too, saying. This was around the time when Snoop wanted to leave Death Row as well. Mm -hmm. But um, like Pac and them niggas wasn't fucking with him for that same reason. So just adding context to why Pac might have wanted to leave Death Row and shit. Gaddafi Bubba is an interview with a documentary. Gaddafi Bubba, recipes to Gaddafi, great rapper, Tupac's brother for y'all who, who don't know. Um, she typed up the letter to give to the attorney to fire him. Word. Mm -hmm. Word. He had really had his family with him. He had his family with you know how in episode four they were saying he had his family with him all the time. Yep. He had it with him because he was planning some shit. Um escape plan. Look how it come around. You know what I'm saying? And um so everybody was fired, but they was gonna use the attorney and Shook Knight was gonna use the fight for him to violate probation and send him back to jail and then hit him with the bullshit when he was in jail. Like, listen, it's either this or that. You know what I'm saying? But he was aware of that he had to, he he wanted to get away from all that shit completely, so he set up he staged that shooting man he staged that shooting, um, even down to the nigga who took the picture that famous picture that we see with you know what I'm saying with him looking at the camera and all that the nigga who did took the picture works for the movie entertainment business he's he's a you know he does explosion shit explosions and all well, that he's like shit. a visual effects. Not a visual effects nigga. He's more of like a stunt nigga. Like he he does like you know when they blow up cars and shit like that with fake. You oh, know, okay. He's in, he does that. He did movie. He did you know he did Training Day. He did fucking Transformers. He did fucking he did a, a recent movie too. But he also 
there was another fucking fact that some brought up about the nigga. I forgot what it was, though. It was some, it was, I'm tight. I forgot the shit. I'll send you niggas the link. But, um, fucking, yeah, you know, and then even down to when the shots rang off, people say they heard explosions. Then they seen a whole bunch of, you, you watch interviews with the outlaws who was in that area. They said they see smoke in the car. There was smoke coming from the car. That only happens when there's a car in a film, in, in movie sense, where they, you know, blow up a car or f- sparks wolf in the car. The smoke, where, where the smoke coming from the fucking car if there was no gunshots coming from the car? There was only yeah. gunshots going to the car. Going into the car, word. Right. You know what I'm saying? And even then, nigga, this this is fucking weed smoke going from the gun. It ain't no fucking big fucking smoke. But then you have interviews with Suge saying that the nigga went into the back seat of the car after he got shot. Yeah. He said, well, he shook out of Suge's mouth. I was driving to the hospital and the nigga was good. He said, I'm trying to protect the nigga during the shooting and I get hit in the head. And he's sitting there worried about me saying, nigga, you, you got a shot to the head. Nigga, you should be worried about going to the hospital. Not me. I'm good. All right. And then it go from him being good to him doing bad. I don't want to spoil too much on the documentary. I feel like there's some shit that I need to just see. Yeah, I want to check it out for sure. You send the link. I'm a, I'm a. Um, but uh, he definitely, he definitely planned that shit. Even down to what I thought. You know, a lot of people thought that people who thought he was alive. He 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 kind of played mind games with niggas. He wanted his enemies to think that he got away in his helicopter. That is a famous interview. A lot, of people, a lot of people don't know about, but there's this white girl that was at the scene of the crime, and she's like, oh, well, and for years I thought that, you know what I'm saying, maybe it was some government shit. You know what I mean? Because this shit was some shit that you don't really see on TV like that. Mm-hmm. She was saying how, yeah, we found out that the, the rapper shot was Tupac, and then we saw him go into a helicopter and go away. At the scene? Yeah, she was there, nigga. Okay. She was there, nigga. You could see the, you could see the cops. You could see it, nigga. You could see the strip when she's while she's talking and interviewing people. Come to find out, nigga, she's a whole actress, nigga. She own, she had a cooking show on TV. Oh, like crisis Word. actor type shit. Yeah, yeah, but they were saying that it was Bob Pac. That was one of Pac's mans. Oh, you feel what I'm saying to make certain niggas believe this, certain niggas believe that. But he was in the hospital. For sure, he was in the hospital. He was good. Now, there's this drug for three days out there, seven days. When, because the first four, the first, I think, first fear, first four days, nobody was allowed inside the room except for Aunt Glow and Athena. Mm-hmm. Right? And um, this is the last tidbit I'm going to leave out. I'm going to leave for, then we can go on to the next. But um, they said that on the f- Fourth day, on the yeah, the fourth day, she had to go to New, to Mexico to go holler at a healer to go get something, and she had Aunt Glow watch over Tupac. Right now, on top of the fact that he was that they was getting death threats at the hospital, right? On top of the fact that did y'all niggas know that his room was on the first floor? He's on the first floor of the hospital. Weird, right? Uh, on the first first floor, Tupac. Tupac. I mean, it, it could be a yeah. It's it sounds weird, floor. but I I don't really have any comparison to be like what other like. Right, but I'm saying the first floor though. They didn't they didn't put, they didn't put Corleone on the first floor. He's a fuck. He was the golf off a nigga. Typically, I mean, shit in general, ICU or if wherever he's supposed to be, if you just get a gunshot wound, typically isn't on the first floor. Exactly. First floor is not like <laughs> critical condition surgery patient. Exactly. Exactly. So, so that's why I would think it'd be weird. But like I said, I don't so have on any top reference. Of the fact that, on top of the fact that, you know what I'm saying, he was on the first floor, she went to New Mexico to go to some healing dude, apparently, to go get a drug, uh, 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 some substance to help Tupac's liver. Quote unquote. But research shows that the, the state that the certain niggas seen him in, there's this drug that blowfish, with this liquid that blowfish kind of like have, where a small dose of it could paralyze your body, but you'll be conscious. Your eyes oh, will be yeah, open. Poison, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you just won't be able to move, right? 
And everybody's description of when they seen Pac was that of that drug. But mind you, three days prior, and even down to the news, the news reports and everything else, they were saying Pac was going to survive. That was another part that being alive at that time and not really, you know, I mean, niggas was super young. Watching that doc, episode five, they mentioned that. I, I did, because you, you think about Big got shot, died, and she was back dead. Then. Pac was, Biggie was dead on the this, scene. I didn't realize until I watched the doc. That was probably the first time it was brought to my attention that he didn't die right away. Like, no. Even in news reports, he was alive for. He was like, alive. Well, that was the report. Like, he just got shot. It wasn't like shot fatally and killed. Like, that was. Right. I didn't know that. I thought it was just like big. Like, yo. Nah. Report, yo, rapper alive. Tupac. That's, 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 shit that, that's shit that bugged me out, too. Like, I knew, I knew, I, I knew he was alive. He died, you know, he was in the hospital for a few days, but mm-hmm. I didn't know how he was alive. You get what I'm saying? A nigga could be yeah. shot and be fucked up, but everybody's description was like, nah, that nigga was Gucci. He shook, I, I believe Shook Knight holds, he was like, that nigga was good. Yeah. He was like, how can a nigga, and, and then, you know, you go to interviews later down the line, and nigga pointed out how Shook sounds salty about it now. Like, he know his cash cow got away. Like, his plans didn't work out, and he's salty about it. Because, you know, he'll say, Sugar say shit like, nigga, the nigga who cremated him, he retired after he cremated the he's quote unquote cremated the body and went and retired and went to the dark. We don't know. We, you can't find him. Mm-hmm. But anyway, um, yeah, so everybody who who said they seen him said he was in this in this state that you kind of get into when you take when you take a little bit of that sh- the shit that blowfish have. I, I forgot it's, it's a T word, it's called poison. It's it's really a it's not really it's a poison, but it's not really a poison at the same time. It it, it slows it slows down your heart rate as well. So you can fool somebody and, and, and you know a doctor and they, they think he de- he's dead or whatever. But mind you, tetrodoxetin, right? Tetrodotox. Oh, yeah, I can't pronounce that. When he was in the hospital getting the death threats, the outlaws had got a U-Haul truck and placed the U-Haul truck in front of his window. Right now, you do a Google Maps of the side that Pac was on. There was an exit door. Right next to the U-Haul truck. Mm. So, you know. I'm looking at this. This is from the Times. It says, is there really a drugged out way to fake your death? That's the first thing that comes up when you search that drug name. Tetradotoxin. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting, man. Like I said, send the doc. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna send do, do you do you want to give the doc name? You know what I mean, you want to you want the the crack rock La familiar to fuck with the doc because you know I mean we can um, give, him, give him the doc name to him. Maybe we could post it on like Instagram or post it on somewhere. You know what I mean, maybe on this YouTube video. Um, hold on, I'm looking for it right now. Let me let me go holler. Well, I need to holler. Because I mean that that's that is interesting because you know what I mean as much it as really we know about these really rappers is. and these deaths and shit. There's always conspiracy behind them, and you know, conspiracy of the word in itself, it was created to it's called it's called Pac Vegas Secrets. Part one, two, and three. Is he has on his he has it break down the channels and on his channel, he has it in different episodes, but this channel this episode this video he has it all together. So you could just watch it in one take. How how long is that? How long is that? An hour and eight minutes. Okay, that's man, that's nice. Light. It's light, yeah, 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 yeah. Very informative though. And like I said, I got for those, you know, you know, my crack rock life familiar, I know y'all niggas ain't it's not dumb out there. I know y'all niggas see YouTube videos and that shit. Son had let me tell you something. Son had the facts and it even down to Tupac's lyrics. Cause you know he's a poet and me and drugs, because we talk about Street Fighter, we talk about hoes, we talk about sneakers. Mm-hmm. And I was telling him, you know what I'm saying, the reason why and this this could even go back to his Vibe interview, Tupac's Vibe interview, he was saying that, you know, niggas diss each other all the time on records and it's, it's, it's good for the culture. It's hip-hop when they do it. But when I do it, it's the end of the motherfucking world. But that's because the nigga's a poet. Poets don't have no filter. If you remember Def Comedy, poet, Def Comedy's Poetry Slam, nigga, them niggas was talking about everything. There was yeah. no subliminal shit. Blah, they was keeping, they was saying what it was. As a poet, that's what you're supposed to do. There's no... Subliminal nothing when you're a poet. You speak in how you feel. Mm-hmm. You speak in what it is. So that's why Hit Em Up is such an iconic diss record because speaking his truth. He's speaking his truth. Or, you know, 
a lie that he felt he needed to, to, to sell as truth. He is an actor at the end of the day. He's the actor. I feel like he is the nigga in the 90s. We can argue and say Tupac might have been the best actor in that decade. Black actor. Points to be made just because, in t- like I said, watching the doc for me and him, like, to him, acting wasn't acting. He, every, you remember, he got into a fight, beat up Alan Hughes because he wanted him to play a role that Pac couldn't relate to. Any role that Pac took, he felt like that was his embodiment of what he was doing at the time. So it, it, wasn't, like, even, man, it wasn't even that. It wasn't even that. That's why I can't really take it. wasn't that. When you do research on that whole situation, the nigga wanted Sharif to have, he wanted Sharif to have backstory. If you go make me this new form Muslim nigga, you need to at least show why I see this new reform Muslim nigga. Mm. I got y'all niggas this movie. So why the fuck y'all can't listen to me and give me my demands, nigga? And that's another thing, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't really, I fuck with the documentary. It's beautiful done. Good job, Alan Hughes. You feel what I'm saying? The, the good thing I give you, the only smart thing about the documentary was the fact that you was able to tie in certain aspects of Tupac's life with his mother's life. That's never been done before in Tupac documentaryism. Because yeah. there's a whole bunch of them. And shout out to my, 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 my uncle, um, Uncle Bob. He actually uh, has uh, uh, cinematography credits on the Resurrection 2003 uh, Tupac movie that came out. I meant to tell you niggas that, but your mom, he passed away a little minute ago, but he was into film. He was a, um, he did a lot of little small cinematography shit, certain scripts here and there, but he actually has work credits on the, the Resurrection Mm. Uh, movie, yeah, kind of crazy, but um, um, tidbit, right, right, um, but Pac didn't fuck with that nigga when he died. Pac wasn't fucking with Snoop when he died, I, and, and yeah, I'm about to say they kind of they they met that be known in this episode. I think it was for the end of four. Snoop talking about on the plane where, you know, I mean, Snoop wanted to leave Death Row, and Pac was on some like, yo, this is at the time it was like, yo, this is family, this is Death Row or nothing, and. Snoop had he had his differences. This is after the murder trial. He wanted to dip, and they was talking about where they was on a private jet flying back to I think Vegas, and Pac and Snoop was asking Pac like, "Yo, what's up, Cuz? You going to the you going to the fight? Talking about the Tyson fight, you know? What I mean the that that same fight, and the nigga Pac wouldn't talk to him like he was just giving him a cold shoulder. So they take off, and Snoop was like, "Yo, damn, this is the moment, man. They they about to take me out, like." Snoop was they told feeling, me he security and shit. Yeah, he said he, they, they they told him before he got on the plane he had the security couldn't roll with him. Yeah, and Snoop was like, "Yo, this is this is it." And then when he, I mean, plane landed, he asked Pac again, "Yo, what's up, Cuz? You going to the fight?" Nigga still ain't say shit to him. He wasn't feeling him basically. He wasn't feeling that nigga no more. He was like, "Yo, fuck him, fuck Snoop. I don't fuck with you." And the rest is history. After that, Snoop said, "All right." Snoop said, "I went home and them niggas went to the fight." Or um. Yeah, it's just my, 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 my deal on that is just like like, you know, growing up in the streets and shit and you know I just feel like if a nigga don't fuck with you when he dead, don't fuck with him. Like and that's and that's another reason why like not saying don't fuck with him, but don't don't indulge yourself in his festivities or something that he's having. You know what I'm saying? Like if a nigga don't like if a nigga didn't like me off when he passed away, I ain't gonna go to the nigga memorial service. Yeah, no matter you know what I'm saying. I, I mean, that's a, that's, a, a, that's a that's definitely I, like it's out of respect from him. You know what I'm saying? That nigga feelings ain't changed. Nigga, you think that nigga dead? And he like, nigga, what the fuck this? I'm oh, you, you came, bro? Wow, nah, <laughs> nigga, nigga died. Like, he me. like, yo, damn, Mars really showed up. That's a good yeah, nigga. yeah. Fuck with like, me, man. Yeah, you know. What I mean, saying? that's honestly kind of the culture we see today. Like, blah. so did y'all niggas hear that new joke that J Cole and Dirk song? At all my life joint. Yeah, we heard that shit. Cole got a line on there, basically, and this is more so in our culture today. Well, not our culture, the culture of what blogs are and all of that headliney bullshit. You know how a rapper might die and this platform ain't never talk about him before, but they'll definitely post about him to get them clicks and shit. It's the same concept. Like, yo, if you ain't fuck with the nigga before, 
don't fuck with them now because you know it's going to be beneficial to you. You come right, off a certain right, way. Right, right. And, and, but that's why I fucked with Dr. Dre's um, segment on the documentary because he kept it official tissue. He didn't get into detail, but he did. He, he just, did. He did. I, I was watching that and looking at it like, yo, Doc, Dre. Dre definitely came across like he wanted to be specific with the words he said. Right. He he, he wasn't just cause, talking. Because Pac was killing him. Pac was calling him all types of gay sl- slurs and shit. He was killing that nigga, my nigga. He didn't like that nigga. On, on, on Live and Die in LA, nigga, he was like, this is this is California Love Part 2 without that bitch ass nigga's Dre. At the end of the yeah. fucking song. He definitely, you know what I'm saying? You know what's so crazy? I listened to that song. Like, obviously, it, it exists. And I heard that, and I was just like, yo, damn, this nigga Pac was... A wild boy, <laughs> like yeah, with that this California love too. Without that bitch ass, he was just a nigga's on wax, like you said, like as a poet. He can't hold, he can't bite his he tongue. Can't, man. He can't bite his tongue. That's not him. That's not. He's not doing it to. Like, this is definitely California love without that. This is this, this is Trey. This is not him. That's not him. Like be it. That's his way of. That's his way of dissing. That's just how he. That's just his style. You know what I'm saying? Real. Got to be real. It's not, it's not even about keeping it real. It's not even about. Like, I don't think that's just his style of emceeing. You understand what I'm saying? That's oh, not. Okay. You get how you see how whole sublimely diss niggas. That's his yeah. style of emceeing. Yeah. Hawk style of em- emceeing is saying your name. It's not. I'm gonna let you know. Just, I'm talking about you, nigga. Exactly. And you I got what I'm saying? facts, nigga. Right. So it's just like that's just how he was. You know what I mean? So and I now fuck with Dre for not even for him. He he didn't say. He didn't, Pac didn't fuck with me. I didn't fuck with Pac. He was just saying, at that time in my life, I wanted to get off death row. So that, yeah, that political, right, like, right. That 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 frame was that that mind frame I was in is kind of clouded. He's a great artist to work with. I had great music with him, but that that whole time frame was cloudy because I was trying to get off death row at the time. So I appreciated. I, I preached that was that was like the realest shit in that whole shit. Yeah. To and me, just to put a button on it. He know he didn't fuck with him. He didn't know he know he know Pac didn't fuck with him when he died. So why am I even here? He wasn't even sitting down. That nigga was at his crib. That nigga he was, was standing up. up. That yeah, it looked nice as hell. That was that wasn't uh, his crib. That was his estate. Yeah, word facts. It, it just but goes just to show. Put a button on it though. Like, uh, I Pac appreciated. <laughs> so Pac is alive. Pac is alive. So that's the, that's the button on it. That nigga's alive. That nigga's not dead, son. That nigga's not dead. That nigga, he he he. He's with us. Yeah, he's with us. He's probably somewhere chilling. Probably got some kids or something. You know what I'm saying? He's probably chilling, my nigga. I can't have no kids, bro. Pac can have kids. Now, right now, he got I definitely. Know, I know he definitely got kids. I know for a fact he got kids. Nigga so got one thing kids. I did like about the Dr. Dre shit was how he talked about, and me being a producer, talking about how it was working with Pac in the studio, where this is one thing I always appreciated with some of the niggas that I work with over the years. When you write a record and you make a song, you record it and shit, you know, typically that process is you listen, you record, you record, you, I mean, you get everything out and you want to hear the record. Dre, Dre was like, yo, Pac was a nigga where he would record everything and yo, what's the next one? You got another one? You got another beat? He didn't even care to hear the shit after it was done. He just wanted to get as much money, get as much music out as if he knew, back to your point, to this theory, this conspiracy, as if he knew he didn't have enough time in terms of he knew maybe... Yo, this is what I'm about to fake this death type shit. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm about to fake this death. And these niggas will try to lock me up again. Yeah, let me just record as much as you I can. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Uh, so I mean, it's up to y'all. Y'all decide. I'm gonna check that doc out. Y'all check the doc out as well. Stand clear of the closing doors, please.